Our soil has a crystal meth addiction. Why do farmers need fertilizer? Is there something wrong with our soil that we can't grow anything without it? Hey everybody, it's the Crackpot Farmer, and this is another episode of Farming in 5 Minutes or Less, where I try to help consumers get reconnected with where their food comes from. Now today we're talking about how our modern system of agriculture with high inputs is really not that sustainable and how it's actually kind of destructive to our food supply. I got started on this topic because I have a friend back in Ottawa, uh, Suds is her nickname, and she sent me this question last night which finally got me started on how I'm going to tackle this topic because I wanted to go after it for quite a while but just wasn't sure how to start eating this massive elephant. So anyways, her question is, and she says, Question. In light of fertilizer prices going up, according to the world news sources, is it true that all farming requires fertilizer purchased from outside sources? If so, what's wrong with the land that it can't grow anything without the fertilizer? Now, I wish there was a really simple and straightforward answer to this question, but there really isn't. It opens up a whole other can of worms that we have to deal with because we're going to talk about fertilizers. We've got to talk about all our chemicals. We've got to talk about tillage. We've got to talk about crop rotation. We have to talk about moisture. We have to talk about supply and all kinds of other things. So we're going to actually start this long journey. We're going to start with plants, how they actually grow, and that will help us understand how everything else works so that we can answer that first question. So to talk about how plants actually grow, I'm going to use the tomatoes and the strawberries that my daughter and my grand, my mother-in-law have planted. So how plants basically grow is the plant takes photosynthates from the sun and it transfers those down into its roots. Now at the ends of the root hairs where they interact with the soil, there's a whole pile of biology. Now this biology breaks down the sand, silt, clay, rocks, dirt, stones, whatever is in the soil breaks it down into the nutrients that the plant needs and it brings it to the plant in exchange for those photosynthates. The plant needs a biology and the biology needs the plants. Without one, the other cannot function and survive. Now there are a number of limiting factors to this cycle, those being water, available nutrients in the soil, and the pests and, and weeds and things that plants will have to deal with. Now there are a number of things we can do about this, but first we have to remember that the plants that we're trying to grow for our cash crops are usually not nearly as competitive or strong as the other plants they have to compete with. So the things that we can do to try to improve yield, because that's what farmers are after, is how much grain they can get off every acre, is we can try to artificially add water through irrigation, we can add nutrients through our fertilizers, be they synthetic or natural, we can suppress the weeds through chemicals or tillage, and we can create stronger plants through GMOs and those kinds of things. Each one of these will probably get its own video, and today we're just going to be talking about the nutrients, specifically the synthetic fertilizers. So when it comes to adding nutrients to soil in order to help crops grow, there are a couple of options. Back in the day when farmers were growing things, and I mean back in the day like a few hundred, maybe thousands of years ago, they started with human waste and animal waste from animals like this, some chickens as well as animals like cows and pigs and goats and sheep and all kinds of other animal manures because they have an awful lot of nutrients in them and different types per animal as well as if you let it compost they become host to all kinds of biology. Now the problem with those natural fertilizers like manure and stuff is that you need tons per acre of them in order to actually make it work. So when synthetic fertilizers came along, they were much, much more nutrient dense than the artificial ones. We're at our tank farm where we currently have all of our fertilizer for the coming years. There's a few tanks here. I'm trying to stay out of the wind. There's another tank down there, another one here. And in these tanks, I can get enough fertilizer for all of our theoretical nutritional needs for almost 4,000 acres. If I were to get the same equivalent in natural manure, the pile would be nearly the size of my farm. So how much difference does fertilizer make? Well, actually an awful lot of difference, which is why pretty much everybody out here uses it and uses more and more all the time. An average wheat crop for us is about 35 to 40 bushels an acre. That doesn't sound great to some of you guys, but I challenge you to do better up here. If we didn't use fertilizer, we'd probably be more like 15 bushels an acre. So economically, the fertilizer almost always pays for itself. Even at these current prices that it's at, it's still an economically wise decision to be putting down fertilizer. But this is where we come to the problem with synthetic fertilizers. Now see, they have a very, very high salt index, most of them do anyways, and they also have things like heavy metals and a lot of other toxins and things that are not good for soil biology. And the salt itself actually is very destructive because a lot of biology doesn't survive in salty climates, and the salt is actually starting to change the structure of our soil, leading to more compaction and other problems like being a better environment for some weeds like kochia to grow, as well as we have some problems where a lot of the nitrogen is actually water soluble and it runs downhill into the low spots like this 20 acre piece here. It's kind of hard to see, but this is what we have is called a saline flat. 
This one's very mild. There's some really big ones around here that grow absolutely nothing because the salt content is so high. Even though there's water close to the surface for things to grow, only a small number of plants can actually survive in the toxic environment created by the amount of salt that is washed down here from our fields over the number of years. This flat is actually getting bigger every year, and the more salt we put out here, it's going to continue to get bigger. But doesn't the fertilizer get soaked up by the plants? Well, no, because you see fertilizer, often the nutrients that are in it are not in a plant available form because they can't be manufactured or mined that way. So biology in the soil actually has to convert a good portion of that fertilizer into the form that the plant can use and then the plant can absorb it. But until then, some of those forms of fertilizer are highly soluble in water and therefore they can get washed off in runoff. This leads us to another problem with nutrients leaching and running around, and that's called eutrophication. Now, eutrophication is when nitrogen and phosphorus specifically are not absorbed by the soil or held down by it, and they wash with water down into a waterway. Now, I encourage you to go look up and see what's happening in the Mississippi River Delta in relation to eutrophication. This is one of the springs near my house, and with the amount of nitrogen and phosphorus that's coming off our fields, and even though we don't put down a lot of fertilizer, we're starting to have a lot of algae problems in this dugout because of the amount of crap that's coming in the water off the fields. Now, not all forms of fertilizer are created equal. There's liquid, dry, and anhydrous. So if you've been around the crack pot for the past year, year and a half, you'll know that we spent a lot of time and a lot of money getting our fertilizer system switched from dry over to liquid. The reason for that is because a lot of the liquid fertilizers have a lower salt index and are a lot easier on the soil and the biology than some of the dry products. Now anhydrous, as I mentioned, is one of the worst forms of nitrogen that you can get for soil biology. It's a very cold gas when it's injected into the soil and it actually kills any living thing that it comes in contact with. So if you want to reduce the organic matter in your soil in a real hurry, anhydrous is definitely the way to go. Now you may be wondering, Tyler, why are you painting such a bad picture of fertilizers? Aren't you a farmer? Don't you rely on them? Yes, I'm a farmer and yes, I rely on them. I detest synthetic fertilizer existence. I really hate the system of what we've gotten into. Our soil has a crystal meth addiction. I can't just shut it off. If we stopped using fertilizers, we'd be bankrupt in a year. So this is a really, really dismal situation, but there are things that can be done about it. But in order to get into that, we have to finish the story, which is talking about all the other inputs and the farming practices that go along with them. So stay tuned in the coming episodes. We're gonna talk about herbicides and fungicides and insecticides. We're gonna talk about tillage. We're gonna talk about the different farm equipment that we use. We're gonna talk about the farming methods that go with all of these inputs. We're gonna talk about why all this stuff isn't good for our food supply system. And we're gonna talk about what we can do about it.